Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number eight from the October 2023 International A Level Pure Mathematics P1 exam. And this question here is about these curves. Curve 1, C1, xy equals 15 over 2 minus 5x, where x can't be 0. The curve 2 has equation y equals x cubed minus 7 over 2x minus 5. Um, so we have some sort of a reciprocal type of curve and some sort of a cubic curve. We have to show that they meet when this equation is true. So how do we find when equations or when curves intersect? We solve them simultaneously. So what we could do is we can take one equation and replace what um, the replace uh, you know um, substitute one equation into the other. So I think the easiest way it seems like that we can proceed here is to take the y over here and replace it with what y equals from this equation. If I replace this y with this, then that will help us. Now, a lot of people, they have a misconception and they say, oh, we have to equate the two. Now, when you get a question like this, it becomes a bit more complicated than just saying equate the two. Because, you know, it's not like, you know, you have to basically make them equal to the same thing and then equate them. So you basically take, you substitute one of them into the other. And sometimes it becomes a bit difficult to do that. In this case, maybe not so difficult. But in some cases, it becomes very difficult to do that. Especially when you have things which are squared and stuff. So therefore, it's better for you to think about it in terms of a more general type of um, understanding that you substitute inside one equation what, what, what one of the letter equals in the other. So I'm going to take this y and replace it with this expression x cubed minus 7 over 2x minus 5, which will then give us an equation just in x, is, this is what we need. So we're going to have x times, instead of y, I'll put x cubed minus 7 over 2x minus 5, and that's equal to um, x times that, yes, that's equal to 15 over 2 minus 5x. So I've taken, this is x and this is this is all y. So xy becomes this. And on the other side, you have 15 over 2 minus 5x. So this y has been replaced by this. Okay, now we can expand the bracket here. So we have x to the power 4 minus 7. Um, in fact, do you know what would be easy to me, for me to do first? No, no, actually, it's, I think it's easier to do this way. No problem. So minus 7, uh, that's x to the power 4 minus 7x squared over 2. And x times minus 5 is minus 5x equals 15 over 2 minus 5x. Okay, we can see here that the minus 5x will cancel out because when you add them together, you get 0. So you have x to the power of 4 minus 7x squared over 2 minus 15 over 2 equals 0. And if we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we end up with 2x to the power of 4 minus 7x squared minus 15 equals 0, which is exactly what we had to show. Okay, so there's part A done. And now we're going to move on to part B. All right, so it says here, given that C1 and C2 meet at the points PQ, find using algebra the exact distance PQ. So here we have the equation that was formed, um, you know, uh, when we solve these two equations simultaneously, which means that this, the solutions to this equation will give us the coordinates of the points where they intersect. So I'm going to try to solve this equation, but it doesn't look familiar in terms of you have, normally you have like a quadratic equation, but this is not a direct quadratic equation because you don't have to power of 2, power of 4. However, it's called, we call it a disguised quadratic because this term is the square of that term x to the power of 4 is the same as x squared squared. So if we call x squared, for example, u, okay, if x squared is u, then x to the power of 4 is going to be u squared. And x, if, we, if we call x squared u, then x to the power of 4 will be u squared. Okay, that way it looks like a quadratic now, so we can, we can replace the x to the power of 4 with u squared, and we can replace the x, the, the x squared with u, and we have something that looks more familiar now as a quadratic. So we're going to try to factorize this. This requires us here to split the middle term. We can't just, well, we could, I guess, go into commando mode, but it's not so easy when you have a coefficient here. So I'm going to split the middle term. 
by using my grid to do it. So I have to multiply these together, they give me minus 30 u squared, and they have to add up to negative 7 u. 10 times 3, I think, is the right combination. Yes, that seems right. So we need to have negative 10 u and positive 3 u. That will give you minus 30 u squared and minus 7 u, and I add them together. Now I look at any column or row. Let, let me look at this column, this row here. Common factors are 2 and u. All right, now once I've got that, the rest is just simple. 2u times something gives me 2u squared, well, that's u. 2u times something gives you minus 10u, well, that's minus 5. And u times something gives me plus 3u, well, that's plus 3. So we can check minus 3 times 5 times minus 3 is minus 15, that's correct. So we're left with 2u plus 3 multiplied by u minus 5, and that's equal to 0. So we can say 2u plus 3 is equal to 0 or u minus 5 is equal to 0, so u is equal to minus 3 over 2, or u is equal to 5. Those are the two solutions uh, to this equation. However, we are solving for x. So we know that, we said that let u equals x squared, therefore we can say x squared is equal to minus 3 over 2, and x squared is equal to 5. Okay, now, if x squared is equal to minus 3 over 2, then we want to find what x is. So we got to find the square root of this, which is, of course, if I find the square root of this, it's going to be undefined, okay? But if x squared is equal to 5, so x is not, is, there's no solution for this. You can't find the square root of a negative number. But if x squared is equal to 5, then x is equal to plus or minus the root, root 5. So there's two uh, x values, and uh, you notice it says find the exact distance. So, of course, that gives us an idea that there might be something in third form, which we should leave in third form. Don't write it as a decimal. So, the, the fact that it says exact distance gives you an idea that it's going to be something in third form. And then that means, of course, we don't write it in third form. So, now, we know that the two points, P and, P and um, Q, they don't tell us which is P, which is Q. It doesn't matter. But let's say, let's say that P has the coordinates uh, root 5 and Y of P. And Q has the coordinates minus root 5 and the y coordinate of p. So those are the two points. We need to find the y coordinate of p. y coordinate of q, sorry, here. y coordinate of p. Now, how do we find that? Which is the easier equation to use? Which one do you think is going to be easier? I think it's going to be... Um, I think it's going to be this one. Both of them will give us the correct answer. If I replace the, what, the x with what we found it to be root 5, then this should give us the answer, and this should give us the answer. This one, I think, is going to be a bit more complicated. So... Let's try this one. So we know xy is equal to 15 over 2 minus 5x. 15 over 2 minus 5x. That means y is going to be 15 over 2x minus 5. Right? So if I replace the x with root 5, I'll have 15 over 2 root 5 minus 5. Okay, we, don't, we need to simplify this. Okay, I'll just put the y, y coordinate of q is going to be 15 over minus 2 root 5 minus 5. So to simplify this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, first of all, um, rationalize the denominator here. So to rationalize the denominator, if you have 15 over 2 root 5, how do you rationalize that? Multiply the denominator by root 5 and the numerator by root 5. That's going to give you 15 root 5 over 2 times 5, over 2 times 5, right? Because root 5 times root 5 is going to give you uh, 5. So the 5 cancels with that, it gives you 3. So you're left with 3 root 5 over 2. So that's 3 root 5 over 2 minus 5. We can leave it like that. That's the y coordinate of P. And the y coordinate of Q is going to be the same thing but negative. Minus 3 root 5 over 2 and minus 5. Okay. So uh, we can say that the coordinates of P are the square root of 5 and 3 root 5 over 2 minus 5. And the coordinate of Q is minus root 5 and minus 3 root 5 over 2 minus 5. Now they've asked us to find the distance between PQ, the exact distance. All right, so now we're going to have to find the distance between P and Q. So we've got to use the distance formula. Okay, so we're going to have something like this. 
we're going to do we're going to subtract the x values and square them and add to that the difference between the y values and square them we need quite a big space here so we have root 5 the root 5 minus root 5 minus root 5 minus minus root 5 squared okay and here we're going to have um, 3 root 5 over 2 minus 5 minus minus 3 root 5 over 2 minus 5 and all of that is going to be squared all of that is going to be squared okay so now let's see this is going to be 5 plus root 5 which is 2 root 5 so you have 2 root 5 which is going to be squared so it's step by step and this is going to be 3 root 5 over 2 plus 3 root 5 over 2 which is going to be 3 root 5 so that's going to be plus that's going to be 3 root 5 and minus 5 minus minus 5 will be plus 5 so you'll just be left with this okay and now we can square them so 2 squared is 4 so that's 4 times root 5 squared is 5 plus 3 squared is 9 and root 5 squared is 5 and when you square something that's rooted it just it, the square root disappears so that's 4 times 5 plus 9 times 5 which is going to be basically 13 times 5 which is 65 that's 20 plus 45 65 so you got the square root of 65 okay so the answer ends up being the square root of 65 which i don't think will simplify any further okay the square root of 65 i don't think it has a perfect square no it doesn't so that is the distance between p and q root 65 that's the exact value of the distance between p and q so it's a bit of uh, manipulation at the end with these third forms but it worked out fine so there's the answer to eight part b okay so don't forget when it says exact you should be expecting things in third form and you should leave them in third form you should not round to any decimal places or anything because you want the exact answer so there is answer or the answer to question number eight and so that's number eight completed other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from this topic, which would be under, I guess, still quadratics. I guess it would be quadratics and, uh, you know, um, algebraic equations. Um, you can find the playlist for that over here. And you can, um, so you can uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and watch a video that will appear uh, uh, in a link over here to tell, to show to see how to use my channel to look to find what you're looking for um, in an easy way thank you for watching and see you soon